ओके आई थिंक वी ऑल आर हियर एंड I'll just give a brief introduction to our uh, speakers today, and especially because we are meeting after uh, uh, after almost three weeks. Uh, because in between we had a big conference, like you know, the songs of turbulence. We are almost kind of having a CCT lecture after uh, a month. Uh, so I'll just quickly give a brief introduction to the whole uh, uh, CCT. and also there may be new people in the uh, audience so cct um, is uh, initiated by the school of environment and architecture as a platform for discourse and dialogue uh, of architecture with uh, uh, various allied disciplines uh, uh, which inform uh, the process of design and architecture centrally we invite um, a lot of uh, people from the field of culture um, uh, and uh, design and architecture along with art to talk to students and open up ways of thinking about architecture and over the last 5 uh, years we have uh, had more than 100 lectures uh, uh, informally and uh, uh, 90 lectures Uh, extremely kind of in an organized way and under the c conversations we have two kinds of uh, um uh, you know programs one is the c conversations where uh, uh, we have uh, uh, talks which are by uh, professionals from different disciplines but other is um see emerging practices where we invite architects uh, young architecture practices who are still trying to kind of find their way and uh, establish new ways of thinking about architecture and also practicing uh, uh, their craft in new ways and fitting into uh, the emerging kind of uh, uh, space of uh, architecture of the built environment so um uh, i think uh, uh, with that i would like to on that note i would like to introduce uh, today's uh, 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 today's uh, team of architects which is called field journeys and it's it very well fits actually in our emerging uh, practices as well as the conversations because um uh, feza feza patel and suril patel feza khan patel that's how you uh, kind of uh, shared your uh, info um uh, kind of shared uh, um okay i i slipped my line <laughs> uh they uh, first of all feza studied uh, uh, at academy of architecture uh when i was still kind of studying and uh, then she went on to do her masters in the uh, she she graduated in 2009 from academy of architecture and then pursued her masters from the barcelona institute of architecture in 2011 and then she has gained experience with uh, seri architects uh, malik architecture uh, stantec and studio mumbai so it's a very eclectic range of uh, uh, offices which work in very different idioms uh, and on the other hand suril patel has also worked with uh, seri architects mainly in their mumbai office and partly uh, in their Be uh, beijing and uh, london offices um, and he has been kind of uh, uh, he had been engaged for about a decade with them uh, and uh, then he uh, also kind of uh, went on to work with studio mumbai and for ganga maki textile design studio in dehradun uttarakhand and he graduated uh, in 2005 from vidyanagar gujarat uh, id gujarat uh, and uh, alongside their architectural practice feza and suril has uh, also taught at the sec mall uh, sec mol is is that how you uh, Uh, yeah sekma ladakh for passive solar earth building studio and uh, field architects has also been collaborating with uh, hiel ladakh uh, which is the himalayan institute for architecture alternative learning, alternative learning uh, for various aspects like new, new development in earth building technology and uh, um, a lot of uh, different kinds of uh, yeah, activities and fellowships that they have initiated in fact feza uh, also coordinated the sun and earth festival in 2017 in ladakh where a lot of people from different kinds of uh, countries converged and uh, converged in ladakh uh, and uh, she led a series of hands on workshops in earth building techniques and design principles for climate responsive architecture so more about this i'm sure we will get to know in their uh, uh, lectures so let's welcome them welcome feza and suri okay good evening everybody uh, thank you anuj for the nice introduction um, so let's roll and then we can go back in Uh, start with more questions and answers. 
Okay. So it is our journey, and we are going to share it like a story. So this was uh, sorry. This is too loud, right? Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so this was summer of 2000, 2016. Uh, after almost uh, a year of working with uh, uh, Studio Mumbai in Dehradun on this project, uh, very exciting, very so many new learnings. We had just returned to Ahmedabad, and uh, with all that excitement and new learnings, and uh, uh, we were now contemplating that uh, where uh, this can lead, where should we head, and which is the next destination for. Uh, 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 our uh, uh, let's say uh, endeavor and uh, uh, practice. So yeah. So after like in August two thousand sixteen, what uh, after like discussing and contemplating for a lot of time, we decided let's head to Ladakh. Let's see what is in there. What kind of landscape, build forms, uh, and structures to study. Um, Ladakh being the uh, high altitude cold <coughs> desert region, it is the rain shadow area of the Himalayas. Next. Next. Can you move the mic on? Oh, okay. Uh, I, I can just turn off. So, seeing Ladakh from an aircraft, you see that there are these valleys which boast o oasis of civilization. Next. And the, these, uh, you see, like the people over there, the ancestors from Ladakh had a great affinity towards height. Generally, in any civilization, uh, build forms are generated or developed are near a river. But here in Ladakh, you come come up to fortresses, which raises the question: How do they uh, get water? What was the need? And what were the materials used? There are some structures which capture the, uh, capture the majestic uh, uh, proportions, scales of the surrounding landscape. And then you have the village settlements which are so cozy and it reflects the triangular relation between the animals, the land and the humans. Which develop for, and as you go deeper into understanding the structures, you go through different layers of why these houses or the way they have developed, what is the roof system, what is the whole uh, construction technology which has come up in different periods like the coming of glass in Ladakh or you say concrete or what kind of wood is uh, possible. Yeah, like for sorry, for hello. Uh, for example, here uh, uh, you can see the mix of uh, streetscape and uh, uh, certain religious relics. And uh, uh, can I use the mouse or pointer? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so uh, if you just look at this picture, uh, she was uh, explaining the triangular relationship between human, land, and animal. Uh, almost all Ladakhi village will have this uh, uh, overlaid patterns uh, mixing e with each other. You have the roof uh, uh, that looks like any other roof, but uh, the intriguing part is uh, all this grass laying all around. And why is that? You have the streetscape completely covered with mud uh, uh, going up and down the mountain. This is a relic like uh, uh, stupa doing something in the right in the middle of the uh, you know village settlement. Which house must have come up before, or which house must have come up later? Uh, looking at the amount of glass used here and the other house here. Uh, what must be the window system and the you know heating system and why is there a courtyard here and no courtyard here all that explaining uh, the uh, social strata uh, economical strata uh, uh, their uh, uh, lifestyle and uh, even different cultures from one village to the other village uh, in the entire picture if you really see there is not a single human but everything is human creation there are many animals of course but not a single human uh, so the kind of footprint that it leaves behind. <laughs> While uh, uh, when we were traveling in Ladakh uh, for a first couple of weeks, and uh, we were looking for uh, opportunity to work, 
to of course uh, sponsor our la la uh, la livelihood and travel and so our idea was to spend the winter in Ladakh uh, and meanwhile uh, uh, find some work and opportunity to learn and uh, apply all at the same time. Uh, we were not sure exactly at which level we will get that, uh, get that experience. Uh, however, we, uh, it was, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, it was recommended to us that uh, we should visit the school. Uh, was, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, basically managed in a very different manner. It is an alternative school founded by Mr. Sonam Wangchuk, which is uh, managed and run by students' body. Uh, when we visited there, we met their directors. It's also completely off-grid uh, school, so it doesn't use any uh, uh, grid lines for electricity. Like uh, the electricity is generated by a solar panel, there is no me mechanical heating system. So it's a school which is uh, managed by students and the construction techniques and the systems are such that uh, you don't have to really rely on the market as much. So as we reached there, uh, they showed us around, students showed us around of course and uh, we finally met uh, uh, got a chance to meet the directors and uh, apparently they were looking for architects uh, uh, the same year as they were planning to expand the facilities on the campus and also conduct a, uh, uh, a couple of years uh, uh, vocational training course for uh, uh, in, in regard with uh, construction and uh, uh, passive solar technique with uh, Ladakhi students. Uh, so we uh, we kind of uh, fitted right in. Uh, not that we knew so much about uh, urban style architecture then, uh, construction techniques, <coughs> but that was the whole point. We observe, we learn, and we apply at the same point at the same time, uh, and uh, that was the exact idea we had gone to Ladakh for. So they have uh, this uh, very small uh, dining hall on the side uh, on the campus. Uh, which is also mixed up with the, uh, you know, multi-purpose hall. But uh, as the campus was expanding, their idea was to create a bigger facility uh, with about uh, 100 students uh, uh, to be fitted in. Uh, supposed to be passive solar heated so that uh, even the coldest winter can keep every student and every guest warm enough. Uh, so the idea was that uh, uh, in such a small, uh, such a remote place, you have about 120 students capacity, uh, multi-purpose hall with a stage with south facing uh, passive solar technique, uh, passive solar heating walls, uh, completely made with uh, uh, earth and wood. Um, the challenge here was rather to uh, uh, make sure the heating is efficient enough uh, to keep uh, four meter height of volume and seven meter depth of uh, 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 building warm enough in the winter as well. Yeah, generally if you see in Ladakh or any cold places, you have lower ceiling heights for the main reason that the room should be heated up. So well, the dining hall uh, is uh, challenging and we'll uh, go forward how it's being constructed. You see, if you remember seeing those village houses, uh, they were also the room sizes and uh, 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 in fact the headrooms are also very small even uh, in uh, richest uh, uh, rich houses also, uh, rich family houses also they have a headroom very small because uh, that's what keeps the warm air low enough uh, uh, for the warmth during the winter even if you have the heating system that's helpful. With four meter uh, and especially when people are sitting down, uh, uh, you don't have uh, that uh, uh, you know advantage. So creating the right force of convection that will keep uh, 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 the entire uh, 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 space warm enough. So this building is basically uh, made with uh, rammed earth uh, and uh, straw clay, mix of straw clay. Uh, uh, which makes the entire uh, uh, outer shell load bearing and uh, uh, insulative of course. Uh, it also has uh, several uh, earthquake ties uh, with the south, uh, south facing internal walls, the trom walls, uh, that's what they call the technical term, is made with uh, uh, concrete blocks as thermal mass. Uh, it has much better thermal capacity rather than uh, earth. Uh, the same south facing uh, uh, walls uh, from the outside is made with uh, double glazing. Uh, 
which uh, helps uh, 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 gather uh, much amount of radiation uh, during the winter as well when the sun goes really low that's when the effect of, that's when the effect of uh, uh, passive solar heating uh, goes very high so in the summer it doesn't overheat because it's shadowed by the overhang at the top but in the winter when the sun goes low uh, the entire wall starts uh, getting exposure of the sun and gets really really warm so the temperature on the inside of this hall would remain plus 15 plus 17 also sometime uh, when the outside would go as low as minus 25 so that difference without any active system uh, uh, it's uh, almost uh, uh, magnificent how it works how the system works uh, well, uh, as uh, you also know, this is a very remote location and uh, having no uh, mechanical, uh, not many mechanical systems uh, uh, at, a, at our uh, you know, disposal. Uh, to have uh, this entire timber roof spanned with, uh, 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 in the, like uh, in seven meter span, within the, of the seven meter span, was a tough, uh, you know, uh, call where uh, uh, about 30 centimeter by 20 centimeter uh, joists or let's say beams were uh, uh, manually made and uh, lifted and brought in place, uh, fixed with the brackets and uh, eventually all the rafters were fitted with that. I mean, like with that mammoth task, we still recall the joy of uh, how when that came up and uh, uh, made the space the inauguration celebration was itself like a party and this is what uh, Ladakhi parties look like when in school we had uh, and this is just before the dance party that happens and then dance party uh, even Bombayites haven't seen it uh, and like some of us would know like uh, there is Pranali here who sits here uh, at the lecture right now she has experienced uh, what these dance parties are so this is uh, dinner and after that uh, uh, the you know everybody goes crazy so this uh, uh, yeah to add here is uh, the dining hall yes it is uh, amazing in terms of passive solar techniques but uh, what we also realize is good point is it gives a very good acoustics because the roof itself is completely insulated like the rafters what you saw and the space in between them are filled with all insulative materials. And then further there is a straw clay, uh, a 20 centimeter layer for, to add for the insulation. For any passive solar buildings, the east, uh, west, north, roof and the floor should be extremely well insulated so that the heat is retained. So this was one of, uh, like, first time in Sekmal such a huge uh, building was uh, uh, built with a trom wall system. Then coming to our um, same, uh, so while we were on-site uh, architects, we were also um, uh, the coordinators and teachers for the Passive Solar and Earth Building course. So the um, unique thing about this course is the students are locals. Uh, they are not uh, from a formal educational training schools. Like some has been a who studied till fourth standard or sixth standard or has been a monk and has uh, ran away. Then there are some who has completed till maybe uh, uh, tenth standard. But uh, what binds them together is their interest in construction. So compared to city kids, uh, if you go to uh, various parts in India or villages, uh, uh, students or the children has a lot of hand skills, which they just see when they are... Uh, from their childhood like uh, the father is fixing this or building this because in villages there's a barter system in construction it's not always that you call laborers or uh, masons from outside it's the neighbors who help you build the house so these eight kids whom we have are uh, like interested in uh, learning more about passive solar techniques because uh, in Ladakh burning of fossil fuels is not really conducive so also, uh, also the uh, very interesting aspect that uh, uh, we got to learn is that all of them coming from almost similar background, despite of their ability or inability of certain knowledge or certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's say standards, they all had a certain very good quality within them. And uh, what we got to understand is that how to push 
in a set like, setup like this, uh, those qualities, like finding out those qualities with interaction and uh, to push them in the right direction. So, yeah. uh, so basically, she will talk about. Uh, so it's not. It's not about us being teachers and only teaching, but we are uh, ourselves students because it's a completely new thing. And Secmol provided a very good uh, environment to nurture them as well as us and all of us grow together. So coming to the studio classes, like we went through a series, like we made a curriculum where we went to uh, theory subjects in terms of history of settlements, passive solar design, dry compost toilets, then uh, there were a lot of hands-on work where with carpenters, with skilled uh, stone masons, uh, skilled adobe makers. Uh, then the students got to work uh, on Secmol on with hands-on on, on uh, various hands-on projects as well. And uh, to add further to it, what we uh, did is uh, give them a bit of knowledge about drawing skills as well as uh, drafting or understanding plans and sections. Yeah, but uh, so this is part of the course, but to kickstart the course, we have to get everybody on the same wavelength. So we had to start with basics like uh, plus and minus in mathematics or be it uh, environmental science, what is geography, how does climate affect. So for two months, it was just going back to basics and teaching them, you know, uh, simple things because the question which they'll ask is so innocent, which maybe we have taken it for so granted because uh, we have got such a formal training in our uh, schools. So what you see outside of the window right there, uh, the, the white ground is actually snow. So this is what she was saying, like the first couple of months completely went into that. Uh, the, it was all classroom training and uh, we were thankful that it was all winter. So outdoor uh, other hands-on practical things weren't even possible. Uh, and the course started in about November, so uh, about uh, about till uh, like uh, start of February, March, uh, we had a very good uh, interaction and these teaching session, se sessions in the in the in the studio itself. Vented with uh, uh, construction around them, and just to. Uh, make them understand what has happened beyond Ladakh because uh, when we were there uh, it wasn't that Ladakh had good internet you can't google something and uh, obviously these students haven't been out of Ladakh so uh, the the course started with the history of settlements what is possible what has been done by various indigenous tribes in different parts of Ladakh and uh, let's build a model with what uh, materials you have around you so coming back to this uh, there is yeah, Celtic houses, then there is Mazum, which is from Africa, there is Inca. So, by making these models is also understanding uh, the materials used, what is the construction techniques. And then there were classes for uh, adobe arches, um, masonries, making walls in straw clay testing of various kinds of earth. So this earth, uh, we went to different villages, we bought samples, what is possible, which is good, what is the right quantity of proportions. And then uh, we did a, uh, like the hands-on project was adding into the Sekmol campus uh, certain um, landscape features because otherwise the campus was completely barren. So sitting, uh, a sunken uh, sitting area made of uh, stone and then plastered with lime. So that's how the students use it right now. And then building of adobe arches, which then further acted as a table. Uh, then uh, with the hands-on training, uh, there were sessions where uh, uh, just your basic uh, architecture design or basic design and presentations were held. So uh, I think uh, what is uh, the very... Uh, proud moment in is it uh, like if you see the students from where they have come and in one year how much you have to put in so our classes it wasn't like following a strict syllabus you take one step ahead but it's possible to uh, get the student on the same line you have to take 10 steps back to again keep going on and over so that they really understand what is a what are we trying to achieve 
because uh, simultaneously once the student had uh, finished their uh, uh, you know training and all there was this boys hostel in sec mall which is for uh, 60 students again it's a passive solar building and they were site supervisors uh, helping out uh, taking uh, time in with the masons and learning and always being on site it's an adobe uh, insulative uh, uh, passive solar uh, building unlike the rammed earth one we saw in the further dining hall Uh, this was uh, in 2017 and uh, towards the end of it, uh, we took uh, all our solar students, we call them solar pa, pa, pa meaning uh, log in, <laughs> yeah, in Ladakhi, so solar pass. Uh, we took them on an India tour, uh, taking them to different cities and uh, showing them different heritage and uh, uh, finally, uh, you know, setting them up at different places, different offices uh, for their internship uh, for about four months before they returned back to Ladakh uh, to intern in Ladakh itself. So now they are all uh, uh, set up in a different places in different organizations uh, doing what they what their interests are. And uh, uh, we keep interacting with them on and off. So, uh, however, in 2017, uh, 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 we were also approached by this uh, 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 owner of this resort, Ladakh Sarai. Uh, some of you might have known about this who have traveled to Ladakh. Um, so, uh, basically, the approach was very simple. So, you guys work with earth and uh, I have a leaky roof timber roof uh, that is uh, that needs fixing so why don't you guys come and have a look at it and uh, that was uh, that was like a final uh, 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 call like uh, we had a calling over there like even if it was such a small calling we, we wanted to grab onto it that uh, we were almost wrapping up things at sec mall and uh, we wanted a reason to go back to Ladakh it was uh, it was like an addiction it was like a uh, thrill that we didn't want to just lose. So um, we started off with uh, insulation and uh, 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 waterproofing at uh, this resort. But every time we were visiting the resort, there was this discussion about uh, how this uh, experience of resort can be really like this is a 22 room resort and uh, it's really famous. Like uh, uh, it has a heritage of its own. It is very old. It's you can say it's the time it's British Kai Zamaneka resort, but uh, this is newly built. Yeah, this is the brand is very old. The construction is very new, fairly new, but the landscape did not have any charm. And uh, uh, the the discussion was that how can the landscape uh, be made in such a way that it becomes very engaging, and uh, that basically uh, uh, the like uh, you know needed a major work because uh, the entire resort is uh, connected with this uh, paver block pathways and uh, you know random kashmiri flowering plants uh, that didn't actually give them any character so our idea was to go back to our travel experiences and what we uh, identified with uh, as a uh, you know ladaki uh, uh, form that uh, you know these farm fields that we always saw the cellular geometry of which uh, it had a very prominent uh, visual uh, appeal and this is unlike any other places in fact uh, it, it they are not stepped farms they are not uh, uh, gridded uh, organized uh, plain farms but they are just uh, you know man-made uh, cellular geometry which had uh, uh, very different materiality uh, they are not fence they are not uh, uh, solid walls they are just this these very loose uh, balanced stone walls uh, and you don't see these things anywhere uh, so our idea was to uh, we were we were developing this uh, uh, inspiration uh, with the underlay of uh, uh, resort plan that how can this be implied here because this was an old farm it is built in a village and this itself was an old farm and uh, to to be able to bring that character back here uh, we were basically aiming for that and. Uh, to make the entire uh, uh, landscape with uh, natural materials, stone pavings, uh, Ladakhi flora, because uh, that's what would keep growing again and again instead of uh, having to replant every year. Uh, the farm fields that would uh, uh, grow and die in its own place and regrow again. So that will keep changing uh, throughout the season. 
this is uh, 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 these are the set of drawings and uh, the kind of uh, processes on site that you see is on the parallel. Uh, so the entire working drawing for this uh, uh, landscape design was done in two phases because uh, we just had two years. Uh, in fact, it sounds very long uh, for a four acre uh, site uh, of landscape. But uh, in two years, we just had two months each uh, to actually do anything about it because it's an ongoing resort and you have to take up certain parts and you have to definitely make sure that you finish it. So the working drawing of this entire landscape was made in a in a, a small A5 size booklet with lots of graphics and very little instruction. So these masons actually became very personal with it. They would sit around in their uh, cigarette break and they would talk about uh, you know what they did and how uh, how the booklet talks about uh, the detail or the layout and how they have executed it on site. That uh, that actually empowered uh, their experience. You know, they, uh, 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 like it was not the instruction, a uh, blind instruction that they were following. They were actually doing something with the uh, correct understanding and knowledge that what they are supposed to gain out of this. That also their empowerment and their feeling of ownership also gave the right kind of result as an outcome. Uh, However, if you if you really understand this entire landscape of about a four acre site is made without any cement usage. There is in fact not even any mud usage to be honest, but let's just uh, call it earth. Uh, there is no cement usage in the entire landscape. So that being uh, sensitive uh, there, uh, uh, and especially when it gets overlaid with the greenery all around. Uh, the barley fields and the uh, uh, vegetables and uh, Ladakhi floras that uh, you know every season from uh, uh, spring to summer when it becomes really lush green and uh, comes the fall it starts getting brown and die within its own place and regrows again in the uh, next spring. So season wise also it has a different change of uh, you know uh, feel and it really brought in uh, the attention of their guests their recurring guests it's a brand as I said it's a brand so people when they keep coming again and again to Ladakh and they say that they stay at the same resort uh, when they started talking about how things have changed around here that was really a uh, uh, good experience for us and a good compliment in fact. <laughs> In the same resort, uh, they had a basically redundant uh, back space uh, near the dining hall, which the owner really wanted to, uh, you know, uh, revamp it or, you know, re uh, rejuvenate so that there is an outdoor dining and uh, uh, people get an experience to sit out and eat. Next. Uh, one of the inspirations for this definitely is an outdoor dining, but during summers it gets really hot. So, if you go to Ladakh, there are two kinds of trees. One is the willow trees and the other is the poplar. Poplars generally uh, are very slender and tall and it's used for uh, 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 structural uh, uh, members in the roof. Next. And we came up with the idea of let's do uh, taking forward with the poplar trees. Um, canopies or umbrellas uh, with the slender columns and then uh, completely handmade uh, uh, the foliage is represented as a canvas uh, tied to the, uh, the slender columns. Uh, we tried to study the uh, shadow patterns, what it will give how, uh, yeah, and the structure and also the uh, can like the tensile uh, strength to the same. Uh, plotting it on site and then uh, uh, we got the trees and then how it is rooted to the ground so that uh, it's like uh, you provide uh, reinforcement bars running through and through so that there is a stable foundation it's uh, completely dry so there is no water penetration in any case in Ladakh uh, the rainfall intensity is very less and this is the barren uh, like how once the umbrellas were up and working out with joineries without any screws or you know uh, again uh, all handcrafted and ropes which are also handmade this is generally how the canopies uh, the feel of it once with with the existing poplar trees next a man made, a man -made jungle <laughs> turning into a barbecue la uh, barbecue terrace 
So uh, the owner of this uh, uh, resort itself uh, is a, a health enthusiast and he's a, a regular yoga practitioner and he cycles a lot like, uh, you know, cycling 200 kilometers like uh, every other month. So imagine uh, his... Uh, uh, what his dreams are for this resort is that giving uh, that kind of experience in 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 our respect with the uh, uh, with the health and yoga and everything. So his idea was uh, that uh, why don't we have a, a place where he can do yoga and he can also promote uh, uh, his guests to do yoga exercises or even conduct certain lectures and so on. So. Uh, uh, there comes the idea of a, uh, a pavilion that uh, on the same resort again. Uh, our inspirations in uh, uh, this uh, on this particular project was uh, we were drawing the ideas from uh, nomadic culture of Ladakh. Uh, they would uh, have these tents, they would take it to a very remote location for a few months over and uh, uh, till the time they are they are uh, uh, residing there and they are uh, uh, working with their livestock and uh, uh, taking them for grazing and they would disassemble it bring it back on the horseback and uh, you know they will come back with their animals uh, also of course uh, one of the very prominent uh, experience in ladakhi architecture is uh, uh, monasteries. Uh, when you're sitting in the monastery with the clear study above and the kind of light that falls through. Uh, so our idea was, uh, uh, the, the final outcome from that was very simple, uh, modular, uh, 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 modular frames that is just uh, repeated over uh, and uh, that is just uh, handcrafted uh, timber frames. The, each uh, of these four uh, square uh, module is five meter by five meter, having that kind of span uh, made with timber. And uh, all the uh, uh, all the joints. Uh, uh, so the basically the joineries and everything was resolved in a manner that it wouldn't require. Uh, uh, glue or nails or screw and things like that that uh, it can it, it actually would carry on uh, 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 an inherent quality of that yes you can just uh, unscrew it disassemble it take it wherever you your resort goes next year next time uh, in maybe five years or ten years your lease gets over you can just have this somewhere else or you can disassemble it in four modules and maybe pitch it in some campsite for all that you know so uh, uh, all these uh, details were uh, uh, made uh, with models, with carpenters uh, doing all the handwork. There was hardly any machines used uh, except, of course, for cutting. Uh, in fact, to give it a really old, rugged look, uh, we did not uh, 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 plane it in a conventional fashion. The entire wood was textured with the uh, uh, with the basula. Uh, I hope everybody knows what is basula. Uh, it's a carpentry tool. Eds, eds is what is uh, the English term for it. You can see it right here. So the entire structure is uh, self-supporting uh, portal frames uh, with this wooden joineries. And uh, uh, the roof of that is uh, very, very lightweight. And you can imagine it's a five meter span. Uh, but the roof, look at the structural member of that. It's barely an inch. So it's basically a rigid shell-like structure which uh, uh, which forms uh, together uh, the shape and it holds the frame also together along with its own span. Uh, and well, uh, as much as it, uh, you know, uh, somewhat uh, complements uh, uh, the shape of the mountain or goes with that, uh, there are uh, there is a lotus flower right there framing the skylight from the inside and that's what makes the entire experience very blissful when you are when you're in there this is the finished set of pictures of the interior the entire structure is wood including the flooring uh, the glazing is double uh, glass and uh, it keeps the uh, even in the winter it keeps really warm uh, of course, in the summer, uh, it requires a bit of shading because the sun is very harsh. So basically, uh, uh, our idea as uh, field architects uh, is uh, uh, 
which slide would you rather prefer this one or that one <laughs> yeah okay i'm just going to talk a little about something and okay this one so um, our idea uh, with field architects that uh, uh, we have been thinking about we have been uh, exploring our idea right now is that we want to analyze uh, the build forms in the vernacular uh, settlement and how it comes to be uh, uh, in the existence how it gets adapted how the construction system construction systems and uh, you know material usage has its own uh, you know relevance uh, and the design how the how the modern design can have those same references along with the idea of modern geometry and the gravity and the you know uh, craftsmanship uh, gel with it mm -hmm. so our journey so far uh, has reached the stage where uh, um, uh, it just uh, gives us a motivation that there is a very clear idea that uh, we are working on and uh, we would continue uh, uh, it's also about like you don't have like catalogs of people like in ladakh you're not the architect you are the builder you are maybe the you are handling the labor you are procuring the materials so we, you can't go on site thinking i'm an architect and this is my job right you have to be really um, down to earth to understand the problems there are no professional skilled masons you have to sit down with the line even if you go out for like half an hour there'll be something wrong on site so you are there on site like uh, for all the 9 hours or 8 hours when the masons and the workers are working so yeah i think it's more like uh, building things with them rather than uh, being uh, architects on site and uh, so right now we have created a library of experiences working in ladakh and we are working on a project in ahmedabad so uh, one of the journeys for feel was going to assam and then experiencing the idea is you go to one place but you stay there long enough and you don't plan how long are you going to stay so for me and sural we have been living out of a suitcase uh, since past 4 years and i literally mean just like 20 kgs of things and we didn't uh, we have been uh, continuously shifting our house and uh, yeah it's just been an adventurous uh, ride but uh, being in a practice like this uh, there are good times and there are bad times but i think it's about how many times you stand up after you have been hit really bad which is uh, i think the most uh, thing what we have learned with uh, having a practice which is so mobile and flexible uh, you look for opportunities and you run towards it yeah I just to kind of uh, take it a bit further uh, could you elaborate on the last point that you made and what does it mean to live out of the suitcase uh, number 1 and number 2 what were the uh, ups and downs uh, or the challenges that you faced in in uh, in the field journeys that you did uh, living out of the suitcase it's like uh, you don't plan what is next okay uh, you have your uh, you are extremely passionate about your work you go out there and you're ready to face whatever challenges challenges are thrown at you uh, problems uh, what we have faced is in terms of uh, work hours uh, working with uh, masons because in ladakh uh, the increase in uh, tourism has caused everybody to do conventional rcc structures like they get bihari uh, laborers and masons uh, and few from Nepal who just come there and just build these RCC column structures which are not properly cured and it's not at all suited uh, for Ladakh because uh, Ladakh being a completely different climatic zone. So how do you educate the client that you know yeah you are uh, we are architects but let's do something which is sensitive and as architects it's going to leave a footprint so what is our responsibility when we go out there and you know build something so when you uh, have this kind of uh, like uh, ideals or ethics uh, obviously you lose out on so many clients and projects and uh, you are always uh, trying to manage and you know what is uh, uh, how is it possible to keep your practice running 
uh, with these kind of difficulties and uh, yeah and still stay motivated like even if you have a bad day the next day you have to get up and be okay so and you don't have any uh, social uh, backing or a uh, contractor or somebody you can go back to so yeah any uh a lot of questions but i would want to open it to the audience first <laughs> so while they are still thinking i'll probably place my so one thing that i really appreciate is that instead of kind of starting off with very uh, big uh, you know uh, assertive projects you started uh, Uh, doing very small sensitive things and even like the fact that you choose to show your canopy kind of project or the the sinking of the pit i think it's a very kind of humbling uh, uh, gesture uh, uh, what i uh, wanted to really ask is that you both have studied and practiced with architects who uh, uh, actually practice uh, in a very different idiom uh, you studied digital architecture Uh, and uh, seri architects also follow a very uh, uh, kind of uh, um, uh, a methodology which is very different how was it uh, to mobilize that knowledge in this kind of field reinforce your ideas uh, because it was almost like uh, uh, digital to analog in some sense for you and uh, how was that knowledge that you gained consciously because you went out to study uh, in a particular way and then you, here you are uh, uh, working in a very different kind of context so without machines without anything so how does this algorithmic uh, engagement uh, address your forms of architecture now as uh, academically everybody uh, uh, imagines uh, a linearity uh, and uh, here is also there is some uh, sense of linearity the thing is uh, whatever you learn whatever you experience as long as you are conscious about it it never goes to waste whether we have studied digital or analog or hands on or hand drafting or you know 3d making whatever or all of it as long as you are conscious how what is the base of it like making cad drawing is one thing but what's the base of it what is the base of a cad drawing can anybody answer that what is the ba base of the any drawing making for that matter or whatever like that you don't have to answer what i am thinking right now you can just uh, explain whatever you are thinking sure so with, uh, in whichever condition you are making it doesn't matter right whether you are making it in cad or some 3d software or some parametric software or right ma or making it right there on the site correct as long as you understand the parameters right and you apply them correctly works so that's the whole point whatever you have learned whatever theories as long as theories and practicals and uh, uh logistics that you have understood in the at the core you can apply it in any different form how are you time. reconciling that on site like uh like i think she just said it's the parameters mm -hmm. so even uh, uh okay uh so many practices let's say may, not many practice almost architecture has become that way that uh, uh it's what architect says and gets built and of course in most uh, urban practices uh, you have uh, that skilled uh, you know uh, uh, contractors and companies that uh, do the building work uh, that you don't really need to change even the structural engineers will bend to your wills and even the uh you know uh, budget will be bent to your will most uh, architects have that kind of power over the clients and the organizations however the situation in place like ladakh is uh, uh it's not the same uh, uh you have to let's say plan it in advance 
that how uh, the design that you may do will not fail the purpose of it and also the construction technology available at your hand. It's not just uh, uh, whether you will force the client to spend that money or uh, uh, bring in some new technology that is not available there. The point of being sensitive is not just not using the cement. Sure, cement is usable and uh, it is to be used, steel and anything else for that matter. Even wood is, uh, is, is understood as sustainable, but rampant and uh, insensitive use of wood is also bad technically, right? So uh, uh, when you are designing itself, your idea of uh, you know implications of that in terms of uh, whether it serves the purpose and how, whether uh, you are working within the criteria of technology and how. So uh, design is not just a formal exercise at that point in time. Design becomes almost uh, while you are designing, you almost start imagining how it will get constructed. Uh, not even conceptually, you literally think about how the tool is going to work there. Well, experimented a different form for the yoga center. Uh, we did. Uh, this is, to be honest, about uh, 23rd iteration. Hmm. Uh, we worked with that many iteration before we came to this. Even this is very ambitious mm. and uh, uh, it took uh, uh, great logistics to get built, of course. Uh, but also it helped us because uh, the client wanted to uh, get it built in the uh, winter time when you can't actually uh, mobilize the entire team to Ladakh. Nobody will be there. Uh, it will be snow covered most of the time and uh, it will be so cold that no, uh, nobody will produce as much of work. Uh, and of course, you don't get materials uh, like wood and other things uh, uh, of that size. Uh, so you either you have to purchase it from Kashmir or uh, you have to purchase it from, uh, let's say, Delhi. Delhi, of course, like all over India, the wood gets imported, right? Uh, uh, so basically, uh, you are working with wood that is any which way imported, no matter where you are. So you might as well work in winter in Delhi that gave us the opportunity that yes, this can actually become uh, a, a slightly, uh, let's say, uh, uh, ambitious project where even if the, the, there is a custom size of wood that we cannot otherwise uh, procure it in Ladakh, uh, we can get it from Delhi. Uh, because they were going to also rent a workshop and uh, uh, bring in carpenters uh, from uh, you know our recommendations and so far. So uh, uh, it gave us that uh, hope that uh, eventually when all that ready material, half ready material will travel to Ladakh. So either you travel, uh, you bring in the raw wood or you bring in the worked wood. You are anyway going to bring in the wood. So basically it was offloaded between two places how it got done. And uh, uh, interesting part was uh, the entire working of the, let's say, working drawing of the uh, 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 the design, basically, the wood and joinery and the sizing and everything else was worked out not just by us, but sitting with carpenters. Uh, of course, there was a lot of back and forth, back and forth. And when finally the models were made, the same carpenters were making the actual final uh, building as well. Mm. So uh, just uh, uh, sending them a small A5 size booklet that even on phone, it was readable. It, they didn't need to print it on a big size or something like that. So the whole idea is that also, how do you how do you come out of this uh, typical format that uh, we have been taught in school and colleges and uh, uh, you know uh, big architecture practice that you need to have this A0 size, uh, very dense construction document and so on and so forth. And not everybody does that, but I'm just saying that uh, uh, that's the general idea of construction document. Uh, that's the size of document we send them mm. for the landscape as well for the uh, yoga pavilion as well for any of those big buildings or small buildings this is the size of the booklet that we give them and they can carry it around in their back pocket literally mm. so uh, uh, that becomes uh, very interactive they take it up and they you know uh, thanks sir um, Thanks, uh, Suril. Uh, you know, 
as thinking of this your practice as this uh, you know, nomadic you know practices uh, move from one place to another place to another place and stuff like that and uh, being nomadic has a interesting opportunity you know in a sense that uh, and there is a there is there is fun and joy and pleasure in in kind of moving from one place to another place and also to kind of and nomads have classically you know helped many pollinations you know many i mean they're like birds no who kind of sing songs of other places no so if i mean the thing with this presentation you all are you are you are, you are very architect architectural no is an unique construction driven no so i was just trying to ask i mean the first question that uh, you know anuj asked i want to push a little bit further because the problems of contractor the problems of this thing the problem of kind of, uh, the, the, the the practices over here will also speak like that no so how do you see the the life that you all are kind of you know uh, the creative life that you all are uh, you know of of moving from one place to another place uh, you know and bringing uh, stories of one place to another place and kind of thinking of uh, 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 architecture through that what what is the what are those joys you know of of doing that you know and i think i think that that, that placing of the practice is more important you know you, you place the practice in that realm of the the opportunities the possibilities of that nomad you know? i think that that placing is very important you want to talk about it a little bit a very interesting uh, uh uh let's say direction uh you are uh, uh you are pushing this discussion in uh so yes uh, uh i agree that this is uh, pro this is a probably a very typical uh, uh architecture uh, you know presentation i would i would i would completely agree to that and uh, uh however if you actually uh, come and meet us back in ladakh we don't look like architects she is wearing overall dungarees every day i am i am in my you know this winter coat this uh, rugged winter coat with uh, these uh, tall army boots that comes on at 8 o'clock in the morning and doesn't come off till like uh, you know i'm done with dinner and uh, uh completely sun tanned completely sun tanned sometimes our skin becomes like leather we represent like yeah, some <laughs> people say we are look like ladakis yeah <laughs> towards the end of the summer we we are, we 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 will do look like that and uh, uh uh there is very hardship like uh, uh uh i think to be honest uh, the presentation is made to look like uh, uh you know uh, to to fit rather in the architects uh, you know uh, uh, realm Uh, rather than uh, what we actually do over there uh, it's very much multitasking because we all have architects ego to be honest and uh, we want to also satisfy that through design or through let's say pushing our idea or whatever it is but we also want to be sensitive so it's a, there is a duality and of course why not architects why can't architects be sensitive but then there is a third aspect to it where uh, 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 not everything comes in the manner uh, to you like how we have been seeing like in the urban practice i worked with siri architects for 9 years and uh, 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 like we never had to uh, you know help any contractor or mason doing the line out because they didn't they couldn't read the measurement so what do you do pull up your sleeves and just you know hold the tape like what if your uh, mason doesn't know how to check the level how to make sure the level is right you actually train them <laughs> there is no other choice choice about it like there are many aspects about it like you know their carelessness and this is not nothing to uh, you know talk down upon them 
it is the culture that is accepted there and this is the result of many different aspects actually what we are experiencing over there whether we call it uh, let's say uh, one of the very few architects over there who has courage to uh, settle from the outside and actually work there it's like in in this scenario it's not a it's not a blessing it's actually a even tough work where uh, 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 how what she said uh, earlier is that uh, ladakh uh, in ladakh uh, peop, uh, like uh, uh, there was no culture of uh, in for that matter in any village across india or maybe many places across the world uh, these villages rural settlements don't exactly have uh, let's say contractors and masons and workers everybody knows all hand skills and uh, or maybe let's say distributed hand skills that they take help of each other if you have a house to be built i'll come this summer and next summer when i have to extend my house in the back side you come and help me so on so forth so uh, and there is th that's the barter system that we all work with and uh, uh so basically when the, uh, the when the whole tourism money when the army money all these things start pouring in uh they stopped doing the same system now they have money to deal with so people from outside started coming in as laborers and workers sometimes we also feel that the particular mason that we are looking at we are we are you know we are dealing with or we are training right now uh probably you know was a uh, uh not even at a mason level in the plains or in his own village back in bihar or wherever comes from he comes from punjab uh they were probably laborers and uh, when they come here uh they as like there is no standard right they don't even have tp in place right now le ladakh has so uh, uh there are no standards to go by there is no uh, uh you know approvals to be taken in any sort of there is no place to take approval from so what we are building whether in the form of uh, in the eye of law uh, whether it's legal or illegal nobody's going to ask and by the time tp comes in place probably 70% of the structure that you see in lay down right now will have to be demolished also uh, one of the things like the joy in the practice is about uh, when the mason, you work with the masons and the uh, workers and when they take joy in the work they do they look back to it they take a picture of it and then they say madam dekho ye kitna acha lag raha hai na so with all that hard work it gives a sense of satisfaction that uh, they are speaking or you have come down and they have uh, you have empowered them and they have empowered you and it's a great journey so it comes like a win win yeah so and if the client praises then it's like a really good uh, yeah but uh, yeah so that is the joy i think when your uh, team takes uh, pride in your work um so in a practice like ours with so much of hardships and all yeah that works well and other thing is like um, yeah cost factors you complete the project at a certain deadline and uh, generally living in ladakh is beautiful because of the landscape and you know you see various uh, changing seasons there is a lot of things to inspire you and uh, motivate you so yeah so pushing uh, pushing uh, anuj's second question which is the the the, the different possibilities of form no i mean my image of architecture of ladakh is you know one is the Uh, the the houses the, the stone houses and the other is the monasteries <clears throat> and in both of them as you kind of you know in the in your first set of slides spoke about you know it's it there is a there is a certain scale aspect and there is a certain the certain dimness and darkness and uh inside the house right it's it's uh, the the space is uh, uh is uh, uh, i mean in this because ladakh is also very barren na yeah, so barren. so to kind of create that intimacy it's not solitude but it's intimacy to create that intimacy the class the the traditional architecture has been you know it's it has been very very 
uh, you know, uh, you know, the scale has been kind of you know, brought down substantially, yeah. and it's kind of it's uh, the 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 condition of light is kind of you know pushed mm -hmm. at, at 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 minimum. Now, even the school uh, that you worked with, or the pavilions that you showed, were distinctly different. Mm -hmm from those, no? it kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a very interesting spatial intervention that you make to kind of consciously change the idea of space and inhabitation, which is not that kind of bringing down the scale and, you know, creating an intimacy in that it's almost a space of the collective and the, you know, even if the collectives happen, it's a, it's a, it's a very intimate scale uh, and, the, and the form of it. So, how are you thinking spatially about uh, the idea of pavilion, which is which which you all you all have, which, which you all are kind of you know working with, even even the umbrellas or even the even the uh, the uh, the yoga place, no, uh, which you made and the, uh, so it's a, it's a it's a it's a different intervention. It's a different spatial intervention. Yeah. You know, one is one is of course being true to the construction. And figuring out ways in which the construction will last, or it will kind of the uh, cost will kind of come down. But there is spatial intervention. There is spatial change that you all are you all are, you all are going through. How do you how are you all thinking about that? I think it's a very good point that you are bringing. Um, so I think uh, I'll go back to this uh, uh, slide. So you see the difference of this house and this house. Is my mouse visible on the screen, on the projector? Uh -huh. So you see the difference between this house. Uh, this is visibly a very old house, right? Right? And uh, you see this house. Uh, maybe even this is an earthen uh, walls, maybe even this has earthen walls and just plastered over with cement, uh, this thing. Uh, I wouldn't know, uh, we'll have to see, but it uh, doesn't matter. But you see the immediate difference between the kind of layout that this has and this has. So uh, over the time and depending upon the uh, uh, layout of the family, also within uh, the f uh, same let's say a village, they would have different style of houses. Uh, uh, and this is itself very evident. This, uh, now, when, when, you, when you are saying that uh, uh, the spatial quality, I'll come back to that itself. So spatial quality is not derived, in fact, in Ladakh uh, with the sense of, uh, uh, let's say, architecture. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it, uh, there are constraints and limitations within which uh, the house design has operated in Ladakh. Uh, I'm sure in many vernacular places have that. Uh, but here, let's stick to this one. Is that uh, most of the time their house tends to become a closed cluster. Like there is basically one entry, uh, at the most two entry, but that's rare, one entry and that's all. Security reasons sometimes, or even uh, for the uh, sake of warmth, keeping the warmth on the inside. Uh, they, you won't see a very elaborate, let's say E shape or a Z shape house or a linear house. You will see uh, uh, the tightest space is what? A cube, a square within which everything settles in. However, uh, the kind of houses that you saw in let's say Sec Mall in the school, Passive solar, which was more linear in that organization, which was to to exp uh, to uh, to uh, 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 create more exposure to the south su southern sun, compared to these houses, which is just trying to reduce its surface, which is just trying to reduce its surface. So the moment it tries to reduce its surface, second layer is that the periphery, they have so many times the. Uh, storage rooms and subordinate rooms, which is just used as buffer zones. They basically live in one room or two rooms at the most. In winter, everybody huddles up. Even if it's a 10, 10 people family, they all huddle up in one room, two rooms at the most. They have one or two Bukharis as in uh, like a uh, wood furnace going on in there. 
and uh, 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 earlier in the house this this uh, uh, like could have been any other room on this house however in the, in the new houses this would be let's say being a glass room uh, 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 become the main room to live in in the winter now these are also smaller in sizes also because uh, again as i was saying constraints length of the wood length of uh, the wood is actually a uh, scarce thing in the end so uh, culturally if you see go back uh, long wood out here let's say even today uh, is a scarcity like you can't get uh, uh, anything more than 10 feet so easily so uh, imagine in place like Ladakh where you already have a desert and then very little amount of trees that you can grow uh, with so less of water and then you can only that means build one more room in your house as an addition after like 10 years of wait because that tree took that long to grow up right so you can't use up all that length in one half of the room but you have to actually make sure that you cut it enough times that you can create number of beams and constrain the room size in that sense so smaller rooms keeping it warm you know less material so you so whether they knew did it consciously or uh, subconsciously it all worked in their favor smaller rooms keep it warm smaller headroom uh, again keeps it warm uses less material you know so on and so forth uh, also as term, in terms of layout they would always have uh, especially in these traditional houses they would always always have livestock at the uh, basement uh, that with the bio uh, like a biomass it would uh, keep the upper floors warm enough coming back to our uh, 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 projects it's very tourist oriented to be honest the residences that we have done they have a very different feel then compared to uh, what you see the uh, in the in the tourist uh, you know genre uh, the pavilion itself is a very open we are calling it yoga pavilion but that pavilion can become a restaurant that it can become a lecture hall it has a, it's an open thing you know it, it doesn't necessarily have to become a house you can make it a stargazing uh, evening deck for all, all you know you know you can cuddle up with uh, you know your family and a uh, hot cocoa and you know enjoy so uh, it doesn't really have to uh, follow the very strict idea of how the Ladakhi uh, residences or architecture have to be. But a subtle nuances of uh, how the light would come in uh, from the skylight in monastery or uh, you know how uh, uh, the glass room would function. Shelkhang is the traditional word for it. Uh, but this is a very elaborate yeah the, this is a very elaborate version of shelkhang and this is not a very tall structure to be honest uh, these are not even regular seven feet tall uh, uh, door these are just six feet so a tall let's say uh, european guy would actually will have to uh, you know make sure he doesn't bang his head however because there is a step right outside he will never actually bang his head because when he's stepping in he is basically leaning forward or he is getting out he sees that in right in front and uh, and of course he is basically looking down to step he his head is always going to be lower than his regular upright height so uh, all these ideas also work in that sense that uh, keeping the low volume low but you still perceive the height because at the center it's about three meter it's at the center that's about three meter not even at the peak of the uh, the arc or the portal frame the door, door is very short actually in fact the client who's basically five feet thought that this is very uh, short height that was his uh, you know first reaction when we started building up the frame but uh, after once it was done he never brought it up once that you know this is perfect yeah like when you're building it all the people will come here it's not come height ka hai. Europeans foreigners aayenge, to you know how will it function but uh, the geometry of it and how it uh, goes up towards the skylight it, it gives a very uh, volumetric feel to it so yeah so that is how we try to get in a uh, touristy or resort project those nuances what we have uh, experienced in Ladakh it also has a very acoustic feeling uh, despite of everything being uh, you know all around glass you can imagine the amount of echo that it will give uh, 
the lotus flower shape that you have above, right above, they all literally soak up all the, uh, you know, sound. Even if you're sitting in one pod here, the other pod guy can, you know, have carry on their private conversation and you won't really get disturbed while doing yoga or meditation like right you there. You can literally uh, walk from the edges and you can touch the portals. So that is the experience. Hi, uh, I wanted to know that uh, you went to Ladakh. You've explored many places in general. So like even Ahmedabad also and uh, Ladakh and all. And now you've started your own firm. So how do you uh, think that you'll be able to apply all these uh, learnings in the urban context? Now that you've started your own firm, you'll be applying it in the urban context. So your learnings in the urban context. So like in the cities. Uh, so. so one thing is um, uh, we don't have these parameters that what we have, it's experiences. And if it's necessary to apply or uh, you grow with your experience, you don't need to uh, take this experience and put it in this place, right? It, you yeah. can't be so literal with it. And um, yeah, so in urban context, like we have worked in urban context and we have worked now in like uh, uh, remote areas, but uh, it's just about being sensitive architects, I think. Yeah, so in that way only, like in cities currently, uh Many structures are not very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there are many parameters to it. You have to cater to when it comes to city areas than in the uh, rural mm -hmm. parts. So, that's why I've been asking the first question. Uh, I, I, have a, I have a question in the same regard, if I may. Uh, in order to understand uh, uh, the area of your query, can I ask you one question? Yeah. That What is the learning that you think that we had out here? Sorry. What is the what are the set of learnings, for example, hmm. that you thought we had out here while doing this practice? Uh, I think uh, your Ladakh. I mean, I haven't seen your entire presentation. I just came later on. Oh, okay. But according to, uh, what I have seen from your work on Insta uh, is um, your sustainability working in the vernacular architecture sector. Um, then the climatic. Uh, you you were uh, catering to the climatic needs of the place. The space, the spatial needs, so like it should be habitable space and all. So and more in terms of vernacular and climatic. So yeah, uh, I, I and one more thing, you are living yeah. uh, learned how to apply. Uh, there's applied science also in what you have done in the dark part. So for example, using of solar uh, panels and all for heating and making sure that water doesn't uh, freeze up uh, during the winters. So because it goes into minus thirty and all. So, so you have applied science there, which here is not a very normal case you see, and it's the architect karte aare hi wahi chalu hai. Aise, there's no innovation. So I'm just asking people like, what do you think? What do you, what do you I mean, contribute? And so I think uh, 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 I believe this question was kind of addressed uh, by you. Uh, qu this uh, question that you had asked. Uh, uh, how do you apply our previous learnings to this one? Yeah. I think this is in the same fashion that how do we apply this learning in, the urban in our context. next journey, correct? Yeah, in the urban context. Yeah, in so uh, uh, again, it is... Uh, uh, you, you want to add to that? No. Uh, my question was actually in a very different way. In, okay. Uh, I mean, uh, our education frames a way of looking at the world. Right, and uh, parametric is a way of looking at the world through numbers. And uh, my question was in that realm, that you know, when you actually kind of come to a site where you don't have the computer necessarily to work with, uh, what does numbers become for? What do numbers become for you? What does that kind of training become for you? Partly, I found my answer in the fact that. I think it was also the hands-on construction that a lot of paramet parametric architecture kind of pushes uh, their students to work because there's no precedent and you have to test out your things. And I think that testing out of, you know, structures, uh, although uh, uh, with different materials, uh, here the materials are different. And I think that kind of served a big role in you being able to communicate uh, ways of constructing uh, on site. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I mean, I'm just kind of 
um, uh, connecting the dots in my own sense. So I was kind of trying to understand that you did kind of probably stick on to the process, but uh, what about the questions of form uh, that also the parametric um, uh, education um, opened up for you and how do you uh, mobilize that on field because uh, what I feel is that there's a very heavy uh, lurking host of uh, geometry uh, in the sense of traditional geometry a very this thing uh, whereas uh, uh, there was uh, it was possible probably because you had all the tools with you you had all and it was completely a field um, to kind of make your buildings more poetic. Poetic in the sense of uh, 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 inducing stories into the building. So not making it like a traditional and a very direct response, which you also chose is to kind of have this mountain as a mountain. But what would the mountain be if you could marry the parametric knowledge uh, into this uh, traditional vernacular sensitive? Like, why can't? sensitive be what would be the rendering of sensitive through the uh, language of parametric was my question okay so in fact <laughs> so uh, um uh, i'll address uh, your question and i'll continue to uh, speak about this uh, um so uh, I think uh, the answer that I gave you uh, actually was for your question that uh, whatever you learn, uh, wherever you learn, as long as you understand the depth of it, uh, in a true sense, of course, uh, uh, it, it, you can, uh, that learning stays with you. And uh, whether, uh, whether uh, you know, my training uh, uh, back in school, uh, uh, school as in not the architecture school I'm talking about, I'm talking about the school school. Uh, which part in which you're, if you're really conscious and if you do remember those trainings and uh, those lessons at a core, and I'm not talking about again one plus one is equal to two, that kind of typical, uh, not typical, but uh, very uh, uh, straightforward training, but something that actually uh, builds you. You know, for example, uh, how how interested were you when you would do science experiment back in school, or uh, uh, you know how 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 were you exposed to let's say eating non-veg for that matter, or uh, what were you thinking uh, uh, the first time when you started traveling in Mumbai in local train the first time? All of those lessons come together. Uh, you know, even if they are not relevant to architecture. So whether we are doing, a, let's say, passive solar out here, uh, it is just the idea uh, that uh, uh, has a technical understanding uh, and implication uh, in the built form. Uh, and once you understand the value of that, once, once you understand the need for that, you start looking at any place for climate response. Is that right? So for example, if I want to build something in Bombay, then uh, of course there are enough climate responsive buildings out there to understand from. But if you still want to completely like, for example, if I was Ladakhi and I have never come out of Ladakh for that matter, and suddenly I want to, uh, uh, you know, design something for place of Mumbai, a residence for that matter. Then if you understand the logic of convection, conduction, you know, uh, heat transfer, insulation, uh, ventilation, all these things, then you can start doing everything from scratch and maybe come up with somewhat similar, you know, uh, house layout with courtyard or tall thatch roof or something, something for all you know. So, uh, and I'm not saying that thatch roof is the only, again, option. You can work with modern material or, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, traditional materials and everything comes with its own complexity. So understand if you are capable to deal with those complexities. If you can imagine yourself, even when you are, you, you know, you know, you're not on site or you don't have anything in your hand, you can still imagine doing things with that. <laughs> you can apply those, uh, that uh, attitude or knowledge. It's about that. It's not, uh, uh, it's not a linear learning that 
ओके okay, हमने ये सीखा कल को यहाँ पे अप्लाई करेंगे उसमें ये सीखेंगे तो यहाँ पे डालेंगे फलाना फलाना इट्स नॉट अ प्रोविडेंट फंड नॉलेज इज नॉट अ प्रोविडेंट फंड इट्स आई थिंक इट्स अ नेटवर्क ऑफ लर्निंग दैट जस्ट कीप्स एक्सपैंडिंग I think uh, Faiza has already kind of responded to that. That the learnings of your will, the the responses of your will come from the learnings of your. So it's you can't, you know, patch it up. Can try and then where do you uh, set up? How how much can you work out with it? So. every situation also comes with its own laws as well like when you're talking about high rise uh, uh, as i was saying ladakh doesn't have a uh, uh, town planning law in place so uh, but however there is a restriction of height thankfully <laughs> otherwise imagine you know 12 story taj hotel coming up next year anyway so uh, yeah when you are working with strict laws those laws if you understand at uh, you know depth even they would give you a good guidance however uh, uh, creativity is a subject of uh, you know uh, a completely different aptitude i mean you uh, like laws don't teach you creativity laws are laws so yeah that And coming back to uh, uh, the idea of uh, you know uh, parameters uh, so parameter again are very uh, 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 it's what you recognize basically correct it's what you would recognize it's what you would want to face like uh, in geometry uh would you uh, when you working out a geometry for example would you consider gravity would you consider uh, a flexibility would you consider uh, modularity would you consider uh, uh let's say uh, uh many other aspects uh, like a, a, a linear building like this for that matter uh this geometry has uh, the parameter of maximum sun exposure and minimum of buffer zone so uh, longer you make this building is going to stay warmer and more efficient throughout the winter so that is the parameter it wants to address uh, in place like yoga pavilion uh, the idea the parameter is a uh, simple parameter is gravity it is not even the layout to be honest what is the maximum uh, uh uh comfortably intuitively uh, span that you can achieve with the lightest roof structure I, if it was up to us we would not even have have uh, like 1 inch ka uh, pipe over there you know it it is made with 1 inch pipe but if it was up to us we wouldn't have probably even used that much you know so i our idea was to how to negotiate with gravity uh to derive the geometry that is you know uh, optimal so that's the parameters we are working with so when you are working in that regard uh, you are not looking at the traditional uh, aspects only you are looking at that mathematical understanding of uh, uh, the parametric architecture or uh, the modern design has mm. i was actually very intrigued by your a5 handbook Hmm. and i i was wondering if that could become just a toolkit for uh, which you could kind of mobilize in the valley uh, sorry it's not a valley uh, in in the in the uh, region uh, where you could probably uh, have a kit of modules which people can home make and kind of build their own uh, shelters which give them equal efficiency and are equally sensitive and climate responsive you know in fact we have a competition of uh, th- those kind as well uh, completely different story documents uh, uh, architecture and uh, build forms of ladakh uh, from various perspective and so on so yeah it's not a uh, uh, a5 it's a4 but yeah <laughs> there is <laughs> yeah there is i want to ask you in the beginning the first slide that you showed where you're showing the sort of na- 
where you're showing how the courtyards are formed and etc. The one after that, I think. Yeah. Oh. Where, where you were, yeah, this one. So uh, you were talking about how the courtyard there versus the courtyard there is different and how we learn from it. So when you interact with the locals, do you also use their stories and not just their skill sets in your design? I mean, as designers, you said we are very, you know, shrewd and like uh, arrogant. So do you, do you also ask them how they would like their uh, local areas to look? <laughs> through the stories and through the experiences that is shared with the locals and with us, uh, the projects come out. Like, yeah. And these locals can be when you travel to different villages or your client, because you're, uh, like in Ladakh Sarai, your client itself, uh, it was a nomad who used to roam around, um, you know, with uh, uh, herds of Pashmina goats. But uh, suddenly, in uh, uh, like they had a lot of British travelers. And then he became a trekking guide. And then he went on to have a, a resort and then further on. So, you know, these are the stories and experiences and what they bring in. And then we uh, take it forward from there. So that is uh, definitely part of the uh, journey. Your yeah, design yeah. journey too. Yeah. And also talking to local crafts per, uh, craftsperson, why certain things. But uh, uh, so one thing is we can romanticize the past. Yeah. But uh, we have to also look forward and uh, understand the changing times. So we are still in this learning stage where we are trying to balance both. Yes, it must be. We yeah. haven't, uh, like, it's a journey, right? Uh, yeah. You've just started a practice and um, uh, you are thrown a lot of uh, opportunities and bouncers and you're just trying to. So, so when, yeah, when like, for example, around. you said that other people come to their. Uh, 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 places like uh -huh. from Bihar and UP and yeah. take up their jobs, for example. Skill no, sets. they don't take up the jobs. The Ladakhis give them jobs because uh, because of the increase in tourism, Ladakhis right. don't want Fair to enough. work. So they, then uh. they have, then they don't have to use that skill set to build anymore. The building is done by other people is what mm -hmm. I'm understanding. So then, um, do you ask them if this is what they want as locals? Like, you're going there as designers thinking, oh yeah, we think that this is what they should have. But do you ask them if they are okay with it? Yeah, so there are locals uh, who are like, uh, see, uh, uh, they have always been seeing mud buildings and you know, they have uh, the floods which happened in 2010. Yeah. Created a lot of disasters. But uh, so they are like, uh, RCC and cement is a new thing. We really ha. want that. Ha. And whoever comes from Bihar and all, they just know that. Ha. They don't know the local techniques. Ha. So here we also try to go in depth, understand what are the local techniques, talk to the older uh, people and then come up. Yeah, but it should also suit to what uh, today's uh, clients want. So that also plays a very important part. Okay. Yeah. Why? While uh, uh, there are uh, conflicting interest of clients or uh, you know uh, local people over there, that uh, uh, there are both sides. In fact, there are some people who really give you the free hand. Uh, they give you the full uh, feel of what they want, but they give you the free hand. And there are people who want only certain things, and that's all. So the thing is, when uh, you have somebody who wants certain very particular thing you actually are not required in that place, to be honest, right? When she was saying that uh, when they do have that fear or they have a very strong idea that they want something in, uh, let's say, concrete or whatever, uh, which is even if it's not suitable for them, no matter how many times you are going to explain to them, even with data, they're not gonna agree to whatever you say. So you're not really required there because they know exactly what they want. You have to make a, a conscious choice. Yeah. So it's like a give and take. So you do back off when yeah, you yeah. think that maybe yeah, yeah. your skill set or your set of design <coughs> It's not even that. I mean, we can even cater to those people who want, who, know, who know exactly what they want. But the thing is, we are not required there. Why? Why? Like, if you know exactly what you, which shirt you're gonna wear, why, why will I sell you some other shirt? Correct. And of course, architecture is not shirt. But uh, uh, in the end, if your choices are so strong and exactly resolved, then you're not the architect is. Question. Now, if you want to apply, 
she was like we moved from urban context to ladakh and going back no i, I was actually going to address this so hi i am tanali i was working with them and when she spoke about how you take this learning to the city so now i am working in the city so the concept that i learned in ladakh was insulation okay this is just a direct one aspect that i'm taking is insulation okay and now i'm doing a very high end residence in oberoi a uh, building and uh, the client was like okay we need three acs here because we can't really bear heat and one just you know the energy that the ac will use the amount of carbon produced and all so i just gave them one suggestion why don't you just insulate the southwest wall that will reduce your ac consumption and in spite of being you know like a very high end client and all they still agreed to it for the fact that it's more sustainable it's more green and it it solves the problem also so if i take this learning and apply it in the city i mean being climate responsive that is just one example i could just give thank you i want to uh, i'm actually it's funny when did climate responsiveness become became an added thing you know it's your central responsibility so i think the discussion about being responsive to urban context should not bother to uh, you know uh, apply sustainability as a slap dash kind of thing so please don't fall in that trap all your questions you know you ha you have to develop your own ethical moral kind of positions with regard vis-a-vis -vis your practices and i don't think uh, there's any negotiation or room for discussion in that uh, no no it's not even choice like why should it be a choice it is your training just like ha i mean that's a different thing but but you have to find out ways of bridging that uh, uh, through your own uh, uh, kind of training yeah but anyway uh, do we have any last questions <laughs> yeah <laughs> no the thing is that uh, uh, uh discussions often become narrow to getting answers but uh, not widening the scope of uh, finding out more about the place so so no one has answers honestly Agile, agile. Okay, I think uh, I've already shut them off. <laughs> Sorry for that. <laughs> But uh, uh, thank you, uh, Feza and Suril, uh, uh, for sharing your journey. And we hope to see uh, you traveling to many more interesting uh, places and uh, kind of expanding upon your library of experiences. Uh, uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, and we'll uh, our next lecture is uh, uh, scheduled two weeks down the line uh, and we'll update uh, all our e portals with the information so please keep tuned thank you so much uh, and see you two weeks down